Let's jump into some of this Audric estimate tape we got ready to go. Um, this play, uh, Central Michigan, not the most exciting defense, um, but but this is basically what every fun Audric estimate play looks like. You know, a lot of shotgun in that offense, which is kind of interesting. They get uh, a little puller coming around through here, tight end, or is that? That's just like a split zone, maybe even. Um, but yeah, so he's he's come up here. Nice big running lane. You're playing Central Michigan. The point, though, is quick enough to kind of get this little angle, but you get to right here, and you almost hope that he has the speed to break away. Uh -huh. um, just doesn't quite have a chance to pull away here. So that's kind of the big complaint with Audric Estime is the long speed. At the same time, though, it feels like it doesn't come up all that often or it doesn't burn you. It's just that he doesn't have, like, the crazy speed to really, like, change angles like this and just get away. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I also saw he got tracked at 21 miles per hour. That's fast. At one point, that's fast. Yeah. It's not Tyreek Hill fast, but it's fast. Yeah. I mean, if he can do... Um, a lot of other things. Well, I mean, everybody, we can't have it all, guys. I know we want to, <laughs> we want to have it all. We want to be able to do everything at the highest level. But I mean, being, you know, that size, running twenty one miles an <laughs> exactly. hour. I mean, that's that's a hell of hell of an attribute. Exactly. Could dunk when he was twelve. That's still my favorite fact. That's dope. Yeah. Um. So he. Uh, coming into the draft, there were about six guys around the time of the combine. Any one of them could have been the first running back off the board. So it was super wide open, and there was just like this kind of clear top six. So, like, if you like the, the, it was the Texas kid, Jonathan Brooks, who I think wound up going first, you got Bucky Irving from Oregon. Mm -hmm. um, the combine time is what really slowed him down, but he was seen as potentially the best back in the class before we got into some of those testing numbers, uh. um, which I think is kind of an interesting perspective to look at some of these with. Um, there we go. You got the uh, pullers coming across. I like uh, I like how Notre Dame's offense is similar to what Sean Payton does. Uh -huh. There's a lot of those power runs, gap runs, those sorts of things. Um, I get surprised by how much he was playing out of the shotgun, um, which with Bo Nix would make some sense as yeah. well. Um, this, I guess, pistol, but similar, of course. Um, big old hole in its own way, uh, kind of clustered. But uh, you got the running back or the lineman down there. Audric jumps over him, changes the angle on those defenders, has uh, this one on one right here, hurdles him, hmm. and then kind of stumbles out of it and kind of gets caught. But that little hurdle at the end, uh, what, that's another 12 yards or so, 10 yards or so that he got based on that move. And that's kind of like the. The combination. Like, I feel like with Javante, what you really like is that he's so physical. He uh -huh. can run you over. Uh -huh. And defenders know that because they can run him over, they have to play him a little bit differently. Exactly. And so that's where, like, the little shake and stuff kind of opens things up. Um, you have a little bit of the shake. We'll, we'll get to that with Estime. But it's almost like the power is the move and the counter is the hurdle. Because mm. guys just get so low because they feel like that's the only way. The power, Again, yeah. could dunk when he was 12. He's got, like I think, the best vertical of any running back in this class. It's kind of a weird combination of like your two moves as a running back, but they work really well together. Yeah, he definitely seems super athletic. And now that I hear he can dunk when he was 12, that he's pretty athletic. <laughs> exactly. He's not even six feet tall. Yeah, so, you know. I'm excited to see like how he puts it together um, on the football field and being able to run between the tackles because that's that's his bread and butter. I think Jaleel's more outside. You know, Javante's between the tackles. He'll be between the tackles. So yeah, should be a good match. Definitely. Um, again, just kind of a strangeish formation, um, but very Sean Payton-y. You know, you bring in in the Broncos' offense. This is probably Michael Burton. Um, it could be like a Nate Adkins. Uh -huh. um, you have some options there. Uh, but again, it's another shotgun run. And you see, they get the big old puller coming through here. And uh, there he is in the hole right there. Bursts through the hole. Has this guy right on his back. 
gets away from him to the sideline while also changing the angle, getting outside these two right here as well. And then gets back inside, and he's off to the races. So while the 4-7-1 or whatever isn't exciting, like, he's a pretty well-rounded back. Yep. Like, he's, it's just a lack of, like, freaky speed. And so the fact that you don't always see him, like, he doesn't always change the angle on defenders, and sometimes when he runs outside, it can feel like it takes him a while to get to the edge. Mm -hmm. You still see plenty of plays like this against, you know, Power 5 team, NC State, where he's able to just outrun these guys down the field. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like he's getting caught much. I mean, mm -hmm. in between the tackles while you're hurdling guys, like, you know, guys will get a step on you while you're in the air um, or things like that. But when he's on the field and he's making cuts and he's really able to dig into the turf, you know, I'm not, you know, four four seven one is on a clock, you know, exactly. versus being chased. You run a lot faster when you're being chased. And it's a lot tougher to be chased down now because there's no hip drop tackle. Yeah. So I wonder the, how that changes things. You got to catch him and run in front of him. Exactly. You have to run around him so that you can make the tackle. <laughs> so I'm curious what that looks like, though, because mm -hmm. that, that would be the way that you take him down. Mm -hmm. And if you're just not seeing people able to tackle from behind as well, that being caught from behind isn't that big of a deal as yeah. it uh, compared to before. Just yeah. curious what that will look like. Uh, we got another one here. Um, I think, is this the polar set in the edge? I can't tell. This one's a little blurry. Um, but here's the running lane. It opens up. He's got a really good offensive line. I mean, they had what both tackles. Obviously, Joe Alt, first lineman off the board, I mm -hmm. believe. And then you've got uh, Blake Fisher also got drafted. Um, it's a good line. And against Tennessee State, you're going to get these big old running lanes. And here he is. Right? No, no, no. Sorry, that's the wrong guy. Here he is right there. Comes through all that traffic. And then, again, you kind of see here's the angle. And they are able to get him from behind. Snags him there at the, what, this is the 33-yard line. Gets to the 30, to the 31. Again, there's kind of the example, like, I don't know that you can, like, grab guys from behind and make that tackle anymore. So I'm curious what it looks like. And th mm -hmm. this one... You've got these two guys from the edge. But again, these are what these Audric SMA plays look like. Mm -hmm. And you wonder if part of it's the offensive line because they're just able to make those running lanes up the middle and he just takes what's there and, barrels through, and, yeah. and gets a little extra on the end. But again, it's not so much the outside runs as much as it's well-blocked inside runs. And the Broncos have kind of built their line to, to do those sorts of things, to run yeah. behind Quinn Miners or pull exactly. Quinn Myers and let Powers just anchor and push guys back a little bit. Yeah, the gap schemes that you see, mm -hmm. um, you know, on these tape right here will definitely be what the Broncos are running next year. Sean Payton's bread and butter, gap schemes, counters, pullers. Yep. Uh, he definitely wants, you know, the big men moving um, and fast downhill. So it's all about good vision and, you know, good O-line or not. Mm -hmm. You see that he has the vision to find the pockets, uh, you know, to find the right holes. Yep. Um. Let's see, this is this year's Stanford game. It's that little move right there. Kind of pushes this side and then sets up the block so that he's got this running lane. One-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one with number 32. Oh, there he is. He's got these two draped on him. These two still draped on him. And then it takes three guys to bring him down again. Because that's just what happens with... Audric Estime is it takes three guys to, to get him down. This time a defensive lineman gets into the backfield. See him right there. Again, it's just a little quick little step to one side. So he does have like a little bit of agility. Mm -hmm. So there he is again right here. He winds up on the ground after this little one-step move. And then Estime powers his way forward, breaks a tackle, and it's a touchdown. So he isn't just a pure like north-south runner. There is uh -huh. a little wiggle there, but that's definitely what you like about him. Then this one, a uh, little pass protection. Um, you got, I think it's this guy blitzing around the edge. Yeah. Sees it. Gets nice and low like that. Mm -hmm. And it stands him up. That's it. Like that. Uh, a lot, I mean, um, running backs definitely have to go get it. That's the best way to stop a defender. Don't sit back. Don't wait. Don't catch. Um, go get him. And I think that's, that's what he shows on film right here. Yep. And I think this is the last one here. 
Uh, it's just going to be a little angle route. See him one on one out here. Beats him back inside. Uh, this guy's actually dropping. I think he faked the. He just took a step that way. Um, gets the ball. He winds up actually tripping on the turf, which is a, a shame because mm -hmm. that could have been a touchdown. Mm -hmm. um, but he's got some receiving ability. Didn't didn't get a whole lot of opportunities in the passing game, but and we'll we'll kind of dig, dig back into who he is more of a replacement for. Yeah. Um, but you wonder if it's Samaje. Because that's again the kind of stuff that Samaje does is you get that one on one, you just be patient. Like it's just so easy when you can when you have those option routes. I'm not sure if that one was an option route. You just get the angle, you get the ball. Mm -hmm. There's nobody else there. Just an easy play. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I could definitely see what you're saying about the comparison. Comparison in their game, very similar. I think he probably has like 15 and 20 pounds on Samaje, but they yeah. are very yeah. similar backs. Exactly. All right, I'll do it for that. <laughs> 